this morning uh, and uh, we are grateful for these times that we are living in uh, despite all the challenges. I like what uh, James has declared this morning, two weeks, uh, this lockdown should be finished. So we want to stand with that faith. This is our ninth Sunday. We have been teaching about issues of times, seasons, and response. And uh, we've actually taken nine Sundays to do this. I didn't know it would take this long. Uh, and the last two Sundays, as Catherine was saying, as she was introducing, we looked at the story of Noah, and we've looked at uh, the first lockdown in the history of life, and we learned a few lessons on how Noah navigated. And we have been speaking prophetically, and even today, we will try and maintain that mode of teaching uh, to speak prophetically. But my title this morning is re literally possessing the future in the present. Possessing the future in the present. And I have a scripture I want to share with you in the book of Genesis, I mean Revelation, chapter number four. Uh, uh, we could have read verse one to five, but because of time, we'll go to Genesis, Revelation chapter four and verse number one. After these things, Revelation 4 verse 1, after these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here. So there is a voice that is speaking to John the Revelator telling him to come up, come up and I will show you things which must take place after this. And this is what we want to look at, the things that must take place after this. Now, again, as the world is dealing with this virus and this crisis globally, nations are still trying to come to terms to how to manage the post-COVID-19. Uh, you know, there's a lot of testing, quarantining, and all manner of protocols have been engaged across the earth. Nations are today gripped with fear, anxiety, hopelessness, the populations are in confusion, uh, 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 and you know, the World Health Organization, WHO, continues to give all manner of protocols, uh, new things, some are withdrawn, some are declared, you, you know, trying to help us to deal with this pandemic. Uh, our own president, uh, was it yesterday, made a very interesting statement, and he said something that we cannot lock the country down forever. And that to me was a very encouraging statement that we cannot continue locking the down for a long time. Life must continue. In fact, it is an indication that the country must prepare itself for the new normal. And there's a new normal that we are going to live with. Uh, and the whole dynamics of how the schools open, how the churches open, how are we going to live our lives. Nations are strategizing, you know, and uh, we have very many models. We have the Brazilian, Tanzanian model. You know, the, 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 and there are many models, that, and, we, and we are going to see which one will finally become the better model for us to learn from. But there's a lot of tension in the earth that must remind, that, that continues to remind us. And this morning as I, was, I woke up trying to muse, there was a scripture that came in my mind. And, and God talks in this scripture, and I want us to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 7. We'll just read two verses, uh, and I'll teach this in a future date. But when Israel is crossing into the promised land processing the future God is telling them how to live in the present as they begin to possess the future and he warns them concerning seven enemies and I will only handle one in just in a short short place but he, he promises them never to engage or to have any relationship with these seven enemies and I'll pick up on one but let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 uh, and and uh, verse 1 and 2. Now the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess. And, the, and we are moving to entering into possessing a new dominion in our lives. And, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, the, the, the Gigashites, the Ammonites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And verse 2 says, And when, when the Lord your God brings them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. And the instructions of the Lord is very specific. These seven nations, you must conquer them and utterly destroy them. And I want to deal with one that is very interesting. 
But these nations are dangerous to God's purpose for the children of Israel. These nations are dangerous for you as a believer to entering possession and entering dominion. You must conquer them and utterly destroy them. He tells Israel, don't allow their images, their altars, their practices to suffice in that land. When you enter this new place, you're moving into totally or destroy these people or these nations. There are seven mentalities. And remember, in our context now, we are not looking at the literal Hittites or Gargashites. We are looking at a spiritual spirit behind those nations that are alive even in our day to day. And I'm going to look at one of them called the Hittites. And I promise in future, we are going to do these seven nations because they are an impediment to our next level. The Hittite, that word means to dread or to fear. The word Hittite means to dread, to fear. They cause terror. The result is confusion. The Hittites, it also, the root word has, a, has in the root meaning is the word to fright, to be, uh, to, to make afraid, to scare. To, to, to terrify. In other words, the Hittites operate with a spirit of fear. Israel was not able, one million Jews were not able to enter the land of promise. And remember the God of miracles was backing them. But they were not able to enter the promised land. Why? Because of what? Because of fear. Fear robbed them and caused them 40 years in the wilderness. And I want to submit to us that the spirit of fear has been released in the earth, even as we speak right now. And Catherine has already alluded to that. You know, <laughs> and one of the vessels that has released the spirit of fear has been the media. When the media was showing us how China was looking like, how Spain, how Italy, and the whole world was looking like, the spirit of fear was planted in the hearts of men. That men today are operating in fear. And I want to emphasize that the spirit of fear is not the spirit of God. The spirit of fear reigns in the hearts of men. And when, when fear reigns, fear destroys faith. When fear reigns, fear destroys faith. And when faith is not there, even the word of God has no effect in your life. When, the, when faith is not in your heart, even the word of God has no effect. And what the devil has succeeded to do using the spirit of the Hittites is to release fear in the earth that men cannot live normal lives. People are so fearful. People are sleeping. In fact, people are taking sleeping pills even to just to find sleep because of the spirit of fear. How will it be? How will we be? Will I die? Will I live? How many of you know your life is in the hands of God? And it's very important that we deal with this. It's a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of the Hittites. <laughs> Whoever rules your heart controls your life. Whatever rules your heart controls your life. If fear rules your life, it controls. If, if fear controls your heart, it controls your life. And I pray that God will restore it with fear. This spirit is so dangerous. Uh, and uh, <laughs> there are three effects of fear. Three effects of fear that we need to deal with. The first thing, when you have fear, you lose faith. The first impact of, of is the loss of faith. And when you have no faith, what happens? You don't move forward. When you don't have faith, you don't move forward. Because what fear does, it immobilizes you. Israel could not cross over. Though there were more, though they had the God of miracles, fear rendered them immobile. They could not cross over to take dominion of the land that had been promised right from their great-great-grandfather, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because fear will immobilize your forward movement. The second weakness of fear is you walk in the spirit of holding, stinginess. People who have fear... <laughs> begin to withhold and we saw in america i think it was in america there was a woman with a trolley full of toilet paper i don't know if we saw that 
she was carrying a whole trolley of toilet paper and another lady went to her and said just give me one packet and they literally exchanged blows I don't know if you, I, I'm sure it was, it was, it, it was a, a video that went viral across the earth. This woman had a whole trolley of toilet paper and one woman wanted just one, one of them and she refused to give up. What is this spirit? It is a product of fear. When you have fear, you become stingy. You withhold. Your giving goes down. <laughs> you know why? Because you are thinking we are dying. We are not going to live beyond this because you have left faith. And when there is no faith, there is holding. You begin to withhold more than is necessary. And you become a dead sea. Because a dead sea is what receives but never gives out. And that is not Christian-like. And we must be very careful in this day and age that we do not allow the spirit of, of fear to rob us. Because what our God currency, money must do what? Must flow. If you want to have money tomorrow, you must keep releasing. That money will keep coming back to you. But if you begin withholding, and I know there are many people, if I go to their houses, your wardrobes are full of things that are going to expire. Because some of you are thinking one year in lockdown. No, even the president has said and has told you, it cannot be normal. We are going to leave this environment very soon. We are leaving this mountain, so prepare yourself. Amen. Life will come back to normal. It may not be normal as it was. They are calling it the new normal. But please don't be, it's a spirit of fear. It brings stinginess. Number three, it affects your Christian walk. It affects your Christian walk. So when you feel threatened, you have no faith, you compromise your time of Bible study. You compromise your time of prayer. You compromise your walk with God. Because anyway, we are in the house Anything can happen, we may die. What, what the devil has succeeded to do, he has made many Christians lose their faith. Their Christians this morning are waking up to go to the shower. This morning are waking up to go jogging. The, the, the desire for God is at its lowest ebb in the church. In fact, it almost feels it's the pastors who want the church to be open. Members are not bothered. Because what has, what has the devil succeeded to do? He has robbed you of your joy of worship, your joy of the love of God. You, you fear men, you fear people, you fear God actually, you fear fellowship because it is a spirit of fear, the spirit of the Hittites, and it will rob you if you're not careful. We will begin with a prayer, a sinner's prayer, when we shall resume. I'm very serious. When the church opens, we will need to do a sinner's prayer. My God, forgive me. Because many sins have, been, have occurred in this darkness. And may the Lord have mercy upon his church. Our relationship must be restored to the place where we believed him, we loved him, we are ready to testify for him, we are ready to die for him. May the Lord deliver us. Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2 says, But now thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob? Who has formed you, O Israel? So there is a creation of Jacob, but there is a forming of Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, and I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, so please understand, you are going to pass through the waters. But what is the promise? I will be, I will be with you. And when you, and through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Please, let's not be afraid, even of this COVID disease. Because he says he will walk with us through it. Hallelujah. The Prime Minister of Britain, did he get it? Is he still alive? There are more people who are alive after catching it than those who are dead. Let me encourage you, my brother, my sister. There is more positive. <laughs> so though you walk through the fire, it means you're going to walk through some fires. It will not scorch you. It will not burn you. Because the hand of the Lord is with you. And that's a faith we must raise up to. Regardless of the results that will happen to us. It is going to be the new normal. And I will say this very publicly. You cannot control a virus. You cannot control a flu. Every time there is rain, people will sneeze. You can't legislate it. You, can't, you can keep us in the houses for so long, but it will jump from one person to 
another. When, this, when the rain goes, the virus goes. We must understand that God is the ultimate in everything that we do. And may God give us the grace to stand in faith. We, religious people panic in times of crisis. Kingdom people grow in times of crisis. Let me repeat that statement again. Religious people panic in times of crisis. But kingdom people grow in times of crisis. I pray we come out better, stronger, more focused, more glorious than ever before. The second element, and I have about two more. The second element, the economies of the world, and I, I say this, will face a lot of turmoil. And don't be cheated by anybody. It is not going to be easy going forward. Because of, of this lockdown, some of us, it's, Kenya is ninth, the ninth week of this new normal. It has an effect on all of us, financially, one way or the other. We are not going to remain the same. It will not be very easy moving forward. And I'll tell you, and I've been saying this, we will, we will begin with pending loans, pending bills, pending rent, pending school fees. Previously, you'll tell the principal, let me pay, and then I'll pay you next month. They will be very hungry because the school has been closed. So the level of the demand for money is going to go higher. So the, 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 the pressure on all of us globally is going to be high. There will be what is called a global recession globally. And every one of us can predict it. Even the president yesterday was announcing many, uh, uh, hope, uh, many methods that he's trying to bring to, to, re to restart the economy. Economies are going to be challenging and we need to prepare ourselves for the next level. And I'll be taking time to handle this in the future series on this turmoil. But big companies are crashing. The latest being Hertz. It's one of the oldest companies that rents cars, taxis, and etc. sells cars. The company is filing for bankruptcy in America. But the bottom line is that you are going to see businesses that were open not opening again. Others will emerge as a result. But the thing is, it is not going to be a very easy time. But the answer, number three, and we'll deal with this in the future sub subsequent. The answer is not in the earth. The answer is in heaven our answer is not in the government it is not in the economy it is not in the kenya shillings or the dollar because the dollar and the kenya shillings cannot sustain itself our answer is in god <laughs> we must never forget though the nation sometimes think that they can legislate they can control you know i was laughing yesterday i was telling Catherine when the supermarket and uh, before you're allowed to enter the supermarket, you must have your mask on. And it's okay. I was telling him the only place the mask is strong is at the counter. Because there, they have marked. One meter, one meter. But when you are shopping, you are interacting with everybody. How many of you understand? <laughs> this thing is just God. Let me, let me tell you, please. <laughs> it is God. <laughs> you are, the only place that they can control... The virus is at the teller when you're queuing. <laughs> because there, they have marked one meter, one meter distance. But while you are shopping, people are just mixing. In the streets, in the market, there is no social distancing. And as much as the government is trying, how many of you understand they can only do so much? At the end of it all, how many of you know the answer is where? Not in the mask. Not in whatever. And we are going to do those things. But the bottom line is, our answer comes from the throne of God. And we must never forget that our answer is in him alone. Aaron and her, they observed something. As long as the hand of Moses was up, facing and connecting the throne of God, Israel was winning. But when Moses gets tired, Joshua and the army, the Bible says the armies prevailed against us. People died, lives were lost. And immediately they realize we must maintain that posture of his hands lifted up because our help is not in Joshua. Our help is not in the sword. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Queen Esther understood this. And Esther tells Mordecai, you want me to go before the king, but I request one thing. Please, everyone of Israel, take a prayer and fasting. Me and my maids will also pray and fast. Because Esther understood, if I go before the king and I don't receive favor, I will be killed and even Israel will be killed. We must understand our help comes from the heavenlies. 
our help is from the Lord. <laughs> the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And then he says, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is first in, in heaven. Our solution is in, the is in the heavenlies. And who represents the heavenly position? It is the church. And that is why we are saying the church must regard. Because the church is a connection. And I celebrate. On this I agree with Trump. If we can open bars, we can open, he calls them a bottom clinics, hospitals, all manner of things, markets. The place that must be opened also must be the church. Because the solution is from the church. The, 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 the scientists that will give us the virus will pick a frequency because the church has opened a door. And we must never look down on the church. Haggai, chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 9. Sorry, verse 6 to 9. Thus says the Lord of hosts once more. It is a little while. I will shake the heaven and the earth, the seas and the dry land. So there is a promise of shaking. I will shake all nations and they shall come to the desire of nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. So listen to me. And as Catherine has said as she was introducing, shaking was prophesied in the Bible. We didn't know. Have we seen a shaking? It was prophesied. He says once more, I will do what? Shake all, all the nations. Every nation has been shaken. The big, the small. Verse 9. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter temple shall be greater. What is the result of this shaking? That the glory of the latter temple may become greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the, the Lord of hosts. Everything will be shaken. Everything that can be removed is going to be. May your family, may your ministry, May your church be founded on what cannot be shaken. May your marriage be as strong as its foundation that it cannot be shaken. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Relationships that were not right in this environment have, have died. I will tell you that. Things that the devil had denied you, you are going to enter into new places because the shaking will remove people to your advantage because that's the God you and I serve. Hebrews 12 and verse 28 says, therefore, Hebrews 12, 28 says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we shall serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. I pray that God will shake and leave you having the purity my focus has changed. I have removed so many excesses in my life. I am now so targeted. I'm so focused. I want to be precise in the new normal. I, 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 a lot of wastage. and <laughs> you, you Trust me, there's going to be more fruitfulness in what we are going to do in the days to come. And I pray that you make such a position. There's been a lot of things that we did just to please people to now... All those things have been shaken. My priorities have literally changed. I want to target certain things and I want to see certain things come to reality. Finally, brethren, the heavens are opening. The heavens are opening. I pray that you'll take advantage of the open heavens. Things you struggle to do, you will not struggle to do in this new season. Achievements you desire to achieve, God will allow you to achieve them. Because the heavens have opened. When God shakes, his glory surpasses the former glory. We have been in a shaking. And after this, the promise we have, a new glory must precede a greater glory. Jacob is running away. And when he's running away from his brother, he comes to a place he calls Bethel, the house of God. And he takes a rock and he sleeps in the night. And he has a vision of angels ascending and descending. 
And when he wakes up in the morning, he makes a new definition of a new normal. And he calls this place the house of God. And there's a new definition of a new house of God that is being built. Many of the houses we thought they were houses of God. Some of them right now, birds, large and massive as they are, birds are flying in those, in those buildings. I mean, in fact, now I understand when we are being taught in the future building we are going to build, and I don't want to say it right now here, it is not exactly going to be the way we did it before. We are going to be more kingdom-minded. You know, this, this thing, and, and, and I, I am not excited anymore about certain things as I was before the lockdown. I am seeing things in a different light. We must become kingdom-relevant because Jacob wakes up in the morning and he calls the place, the house, of God. There is no cross, there's no building, there's no worship team, there's no keyboard. Man, goodness. In other words, all of these things, if Jacob can sleep on a rock and wake up in the morning and call that place the house of God and all what we've called church, no cross. Hmm. A new heaven is what we need where his angels can descend and ascend, bringing solutions, house, bringing bread to his people. The last thing I said as I finish, Samuel is hearing the voice of God. Eli has been an impediment to the speakings of God. And Eli is being removed because a new Samuel is going to emerge who will begin to hear the word and say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is hearing. For many years, Eli has spoken. But a new day and a new generation is emerging across the earth of Samuels who are connected to his spirit. They are not well groomed. They don't know how to dress. They don't know how to talk. They have no flair of the early order. They don't wear the robes and all the extremes. But this young man, his greatest gifting is his ability to hearing his voice. And that's what will give him credence, clout, and respect in his peers. But everything else, he is dis disqualified. But one quality that we want to ask God, God, speak because we are servants. We want to hear your word. We want to hear your instruction. And so this morning as we finish, our prayer is God, speak to us. We want to hear your, ins your, ins your instruction. Father, we are thankful. Father, we are grateful, my God, that no one among us, us shall be like Eli, but you will renew us, O oh God, to a place we can hear your voice. We can no longer struggle as we've struggled, my Father. We want to hear your instruction for the new place, for the new heavens that are opening, O oh God. We want to hear you, O oh God. We want to hear you, O oh God. Speak to us. Speak to us, O oh God. I pray and I prophesy that Samuel will find the faith and the confidence to hear, hearing, to, to hear and respond to the call of God. And somewhere, some of the Samuels will prophesy of the dying of, a new, of an old season and the birthing of a new thing. And that's what we are declaring. The dying of, a new, of an old order and the beginning of a new order. This lockdown is opening up a new people, a new generation of preachers, a new generation of businessmen, kingdom businessmen, whose intention, whose desire is him and him alone. Mm -hmm. You're all You're all
just lift up your voice, help me God. 